Uh, today we'll be talking about back to school with artificial intelligence and this webinar as I mentioned is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix as well as Microsoft and it's part of the European Code Week 2021. Now to get a greater experience out of this webinar we ask you to open the chat box and uh, this is where we will be sharing some useful information as well as links with you throughout the webinar and also since this is an interactive webinar where you can interact with the speakers please feel free to share your questions in this chat window because we will be collecting them and address them to the speakers in the end and also uh, the uh, the images of the speakers and uh, the videos you see here you will find a button in the top like in the in the bottom to actually fit the uh, the background to the frame so you can see our names and uh, see a better uh, video. Now uh, you are currently unmuted but if you have questions uh, later in the Q&A part uh, we will unmute you if you raise your hand. And this is already the first link that we uh, are sharing with you and the chat box you can now click on the participation list, which is there to validate that you actually attended this webinar. And we need this to prove the event took place and we can continue organizing events like this one in the future. Also, if you're interested in a certificate of participation, this is the only way to request one. All right, and with this, let's move on to our agenda for today. We will begin with a keynote on computer science and education. We will then move on to a panel discussion with our three speakers, uh, Kiriakos Ukursaris, Marco Neves, and Vanya Neto. And we will be discussing best practices in computer science, artificial intelligence in education uh, from different perspectives. Finally, you will be able to ask questions to the speakers and you can do this throughout the webinar. Uh, but in the end, during the Q&A session, that is when we will address them. So please share your questions uh, in the chat. Now, before we continue with computer science and education, let me just quickly introduce myself and the STEM Alliance. And here, I am very happy as the STEM Alliance project manager to, uh, to host this webinar today and to be talking about these topics. Now, the STEM Alliance departed from the very simple observation that our societies are facing a number of challenges, which include demographic transformations, lack of interest and low performance in STEM subjects. Now, if you feel you have any other challenges in your STEM classes, or maybe you see any STEM challenges related uh, to this in our societies, please feel free to share them in the chat. I'll be very curious to hear your thoughts about this. Uh, but some points that I think are important as well are issues such as climate change, mobility and energy. And this is why the STEM Alliance as an international initiative brings together educators, STEM industries and European ministries of education to promote STEM education and careers to young Europeans. So you see here where uh, 21 companies uh, from from all over the world and uh, if you're interested in staying up to date follow us on our social media channels or sign up to the latest newsletter and if you're interested in our activities over the coming months then i invite you to follow the back to school campaign this year which happens under the tagline of stem career days from the 2nd to the 19th of november so stay tuned for this and with this being said let me introduce you to the first topic. Now, I am quickly going to have a, a look into the chat. And I see that uh, Vanya uh, Neto will have to take over this part because unfortunately, Alexa Joyce could not join us today. Uh, she had some personal, um, yeah, some personal obligations. So I'm very sorry, but nonetheless, Vanya Neto uh, will um, will uh, tell us more about the 
computer science curriculum and artificial intelligence at Microsoft. Now, let me just quickly introduce Vanya Neto. Uh, she is education skills and learning lead for Microsoft Western Europe. She's responsible for the education scaling strategy and <clears throat> apologies. Vanya, how are you today? Good. I'm good. Thanks, Jorn. Thanks for your introduction and I hope you get better there. But uh, well, first of all, I would like to apologize on behalf of Alexa. Unfortunately, Alexa got a, you know, a health uh, problem and she had to, to go to, to a health center. So she's not available today. I hope she gets better soon as well. And I'll try to do my best to well to, to replace Alexa even if, if, if it is uh, last minute. But I am sure that, uh, well, if you have any any questions to her, uh, she will be happy then to to address them afterwards. You can you can um, ask them directly on LinkedIn and, and, and uh, address her there. She's always happy to to answer your questions. Or of course we can we can uh, send we can send her an email afterwards with all the questions that you had for her. Uh, but first of all, I would like to start well with with exactly what we are doing right now with with uh, as Microsoft, what we are doing uh, with with European School Net, and especially because we are. Um, even though we are part of the STEM Alliance, and as Bjorn already shared with you all, you know, what is the goal of the STEM Alliance and what we are doing. Um, nevertheless, we thought it would be very important to strengthen our relationship with European School Net, especially uh, having in mind that we we need to we have a mission right as microsoft to enable and to empower every student on the planet to achieve more and we know that european school net also uh, has a mission to support ministries of education schools uh, teachers and uh, relevant uh, education stakeholders but and at the end we have to address you know the the, the the target audience which are the students and that's what we aim at and that's why we are doing this you know this closer partnership to ensure that the students of today will have you know the, the skills that they need to address the the, the world of tomorrow and besides our joint vision uh, would I would just highlight that we are we will be doing more and more activities to promote STEM and of course this this uh, webinar is just an example of those activities and we want to make sure that all of you uh, teachers that are so important to the education system that you feel comfortable and have the resources and and the tools that you need um, and we support you as best as we can so you can also you know support the students we are our Primary, of course, uh, the 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 main clients, I would say, for education system, um, and we will have a lot of resources that we, we will make available uh, through European School Net as well. Uh, and if uh, after this this uh, call you have any uh, you know any questions specific about one of these resources, we will be happy, of course, to to send you further information about that. I'll do my best to well during this call to show you. But specifically for this first webinar, we would like to share with you one of the things that Alexa has been working personally, which is uh, a computer science and AI curriculum that Microsoft has built, um, and it is available for free for all of you. Uh, and why did we do this? And why we are you know, uh, making this available? Because we know that um, many uh, in, in all the countries, right, all the, the governments and all the teachers are looking, how can we better support our students to be ready? How can we make sure that we integrate computer science in the curriculum in the way that it does not make that look like, you know, it's a very strange thing that's very difficult, etc. We want to make this accessible and making sure that the, uh, the access to it is also equitable, right? And it's as simple and as... Um, uh, I would say closer to the students as possible. But for that, of course, we need also to make sure that the the teachers are are ready for that and the governments are ready for that. We know that this it's a very you know it's it's very dispersed the the, the way that uh, well the countries in the world are addressing this situation. Some of them really have computer science curriculums. Some of them don't, and some of them have really you know mixed environments. Uh, and in Europe, it's it's the same. You know that some countries are more advanced than others. But why do we really? Why do we build a computer science toolkit? Why do we make it available? So, to be honest, we want to make sure that 
for all education institutions and for all teachers, there is a, a toolkit, there is a, you know, an asset, a, 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 a global asset that they can use like out of the box and that offers them guidance to be able to integrate computer science uh, in their, in their uh, kindergarten to 13 in their school. And of course, uh, we also want to make sure that as tech industry, we are also supporting, and that's, that is also a way of doing it uh, and making this available for all of you for free. So um, we have what we, what we say like the computer science curriculum toolkit. That is an, an asset, like a, a set of assets that you, have, you can have access that you can, how, and, and it has a step-by-step -step how you can integrate uh, the computer science curriculum in, inside your, your curriculum that what you are trying to teach to your students. Um, and uh, you will have access also to a, a master plan that will show you all the components and all the different bits and pieces where, where, it's compo where it's composed. And then you can really pick and choose what you believe it's best for your students regarding the age or the, the goals that you have for your learning experience. Um, so this curriculum uh, was, was built taking advantage, of course, of our technology and the, the vast resources that we, that we have and that we offer. Of course, it was also built to right, make sure that we are problem solving, right? We, it's, it's a problem based learning and making sure that the, the students will be ready to solve problems. We know that this is one of the, the most important uh, skill for the, this 21st century, right? Problem solving. And also uh, making sure that we are using cutting edge technology, uh, normally which are not present in, 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 in the national curriculum. It's, it's normally not used. And first of all, and last but not least, that it's mapped to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And this is very important also in matching what, what Bjorn said in the beginning with, um, you know, sustainability, uh, the mobility and all the, 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 the new challenges that we have with climate change. This is more and more important so that the, the students understand how they can solve, you know, the world's problems with the use of technology as well. Just for you to have, I just give you an highlight, and of course, my, I really invite you to dig in. And if you have any, you know, any difficulties or any questions, of course, you can address it them through LinkedIn for me or to Alexa. Um, but we know that uh, we had to make it simple and at the same time, um, well, relevant uh, for what you do. And so, we we the we, the content is organized in domain levels, and I will show you which they are. Um, it's three domain levels. Then they are, you know, under that we have three big ideas, and then the the idea is that the 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 students will solve three big questions that it will be addressed, right? And then uh, learning is also defined in three specific learning um, competences in that sense: computational thinking, data literacy, and design thinking. These are the three that we considered that are the most relevant for 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 this this topic and that are in that sense enhanced by the use of this uh, computer science toolkit this is very small i'm sorry but uh, if when you when you look at it in the the computer science toolkit you'll be able to to pin it and to to make it to make it bigger but uh just to let you know that in terms of the of the the big domains we we have um working with technology working with data and working with computers. So the three big domains that we have. And then uh, and then we also have, you know, software development, um, um, robotics and automation, data and AI, platform and cloud, human computer interaction and cybersecurity, which we believe are the, you know, the six most important domains under those, those big uh, ideas. And uh, well, uh, we hope that this is, and then, of course, as you can see, then it's mapped with the different ages of the students and the levels that they are. And um, we have suggestions of activities for all of these, uh, uh, you know, ages and levels that you can do with your students to enhance these uh, competences in them. 
Moreover, we also have some hands-on tools that you can access, for example, Azure for Students, and you can also have your students, if they are really tech-savvy, to go through our MS Learn uh, platform. It's, it's free as well, so they can do, just do their own learning, uh, their learning path as, as, as they wish, and has, of course, as you show them, uh, which are the best content that they can consume. But it's something that they can also, you know, explore further and make sure that they are uh, well ready to and feel comfortable to, to have an um, autonomous learning. And this platform was also built for that to make sure that they have the, the tech skills that they need for the future. But also they can choose which technology, what are their age, uh, what is the, the profession, the profession, for example, that they will have they would like to have. And then they can also have suggested learning paths as well and they can start from from an early age you know digging into that and understanding what they like and what they don't and and this is uh, something that of course you can also incentivize uh, with your students i will also leave in in the in the um, in this presentation uh, the two important you know links one of them is for the blog post where you'll have all the information about the white, pa white paper and the computer science toolkit and access it for free, as I told you. And we also have a computer science curriculum training course where you can, it's a two hour course where you can better understand how you can implement this in your classroom because probably you are thinking Vanya you are crazy how am I going to do that in my classroom but then you please go and and take two hours of your time uh, go through this computer science curriculum training course and do that uh, and and after that I'm sure you will be you will be feeling more comfortable and you'll have the examples on how to use that with, with your students of course you don't need to use the full uh, you know the full deck and the full uh, the full scope of it, but I'm pretty sure that you will find very interesting uh, and and practical uh, activities that you can do with the students that would for sure change their lives and their competences and their skills for the future. So this is our aim. This is our goal. I hope that you also share this uh, this and um, and I'm, I'm I'm also sure that you will find this very interesting. Uh, and if you have any, again, if you have any doubt, any difficulty using this, come to me um, through LinkedIn. I'll be happy to, to to talk to you about it. Or Alexa, of course, she's the big, she's the big head behind this. So I hope I was good enough so replacing her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vanya, and thanks also for setting the scene for uh, all the skills and competences needed in when we talk about computer science. So I'm now actually really excited, first of all, to see all the engagement in the chat. We have a lot of messages received and I see there are people joining from uh, so many different places. This is really nice. Also with the cameras on, it's uh, great to see uh, so many faces and I'm really happy you're all here today. But uh, I'm also happy to now move on to the discussion panel and apologies uh, for <laughs> just giving half of the introduction on Vanya in the beginning. Um, let me continue this uh, at this point. So uh, I'm, very, as I said, very excited now for this panel discussion that we have on best practices in computer science and artificial intelligence in education. Now, um, before we start the discussion, let me actually introduce you to our panelists, Vanya Neto, Marco Nevis, and Kiriakos uh, Kursaris. Now, Vanya Neto is Education Skills and Learning Lead for Microsoft Western Europe, responsible for the education scaling strategy and the relationship with education institutions, faculties, educators, and students. She's deeply involved in the AI skills initiatives developed in Western Europe, as well as the agenda for digital skills, supporting Europe's digital transition goals. So welcome again, Vanya, and thanks also for uh, for jumping in today. Uh, now, moving on to Marco Nevis from Interact Ideas. Marco is consultant on digital education and artificial intelligence in education. He is not only computer science, uh, a computer science teacher and an educational project coordinator, but also an expert on technologies applied in learning environments such as AI, robotics, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, the Internet of Things and 3D printing as well as how they facilitate the development of a skills framework 
in the context of the digital transformation. Now, Marco, how is it going today? Hi, Bjorn, and take the chance to say hi, Vania and Kiriakos and to the other participants are here with us today. I'm, I'm feeling great and it's a huge pleasure to be here with you today and discussing such an important topic. Great, and it's good to have you here. Thanks so much. Now, last but not least, we have the pleasure to have Kiriakos Kursaris in our panel today. And uh, Kiriakos is technology director at the United Lisbon International School, where he facilitates technology rich teaching and learning. Uh, he guides collaborative curricular innovation, as well as training and support while encouraging the creative, independent and responsible use of technology. Now, Kiriakos, it's great to have you here today. How are you? Hello, Bjorn. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. It's great to be back to another STEM Alliance event and in such a great company, once again, to be sharing best practices alone around these really interesting and really relevant topics regarding education. Good to be here. Great. And let me start right away with a question to you. Now, we've received several questions from the participants already and also uh, both in the registration form and in the chat here. Many of them actually revolved around the question how to integrate technology or artificial intelligence in their classrooms. So, Kiriakos, how do you teach or integrate technology in the school curriculum, in the classroom? And what kind of resources do you recommend to use? Oh, great. Um, excellent. Thank you for that question, Bjorn. So, um, I'll just skip here. Uh, hopefully, I was able to change the slide. So, t integrating technology is something that it has been quite a hot topic, let's say, for the past years. Um, and let's let's just think about let's since now we're dividing our timeline pre-COVID and post-COVID. Obviously, pre-COVID there was a big uh, surge, a big. Um, let's say, uh, initiative to introduce one-to-one -one technology programs uh, in educational systems, uh, as well as making sure that students, teachers, and schools are being accompanied properly in the, let's say, the, the personalization of education as we know it. Um, and obviously, with COVID hitting, um, everything kind of like accelerated 10 years in the future. Uh, we went and picked up the tools and, the, and the, uh, that we needed uh, in order to, to, to give a response to the necessities of, of, of the pandemic um, and obviously um, trying to catch up with our mindset as well, which was at the time very, very, um, very, very, very new, very young, I would say. But in, in when it comes to technology integration, I think the first topic, as I have, as you can see on the slide, is context. Um, re no matter the, the tool we're using or um, the, the situation we have in our hands, context is really important when we're introducing technology in the classroom because we need to make it relevant to our students. We need to make it real. We need to make it. Uh, we need to make the topic um, make the connection, let's say, with the real world, which is why it's really important that we focus on the why we are doing whatever we're doing instead of the how, because there's hundreds of tools nowadays. There's a plethora of hardware, software, um, to in, and tools in our, in our, in our, in our disposal. Uh, but the important here is always very much, it's focusing on these learning outcomes. And computer science is a learning outcome because it directly connects to computational thinking and the ability to resolve problems that can be tackled eventually by machines because it's all about resolving small problem in a way that then eventually can scale up. And that's what technology allows us to do. Um, obviously, resources can come in various forms. Um, professional development is a resource for integrating technology because our teachers need to be properly trained um, to do what they have to do and like the computer, uh, the computer science toolkit is a professional development path that an educator can pick up and invest their time in it. Space is really important. 
in, in, in involving the community and investing in the appropriate space uh, where students are learning in the modern space where learning is directed is extremely important. Having uh, the leadership setting the tone and, and the next steps, uh, making everyone on the same page is again a resource that needs to be integrated. And of course the infrastructure, Wi-Fi, the devices themselves, um, and the access to these technologies uh, is crucial. Um, I, Inter United Lisbon International School is quite a young school and we are a Microsoft Showcase school very recently. And uh, being able to have access to resources that allow this personalization of the, of, of the educational path is extremely important. Thank you so much. And I will give a similar question uh, to our second speaker, Marco. So from an educational point of view, but also from a curriculum point of view, uh, um, Kiriakos has talked about the ways that technology and AI can be integrated. Now, uh, what do you think? How can artificial intellig intelligence be integrated into uh, educational systems? Um, how can this be integrated into the curriculum? Thank you very much for, for your question. It's a very pertinent question. And only that question will we need a, a webinar to be able to uh, spot on on the different um, uh, topics uh, around that. Um, nowadays, we, we know that we are living tremendous times. So this could be some of the most challenged times that um, humankind live, um, live uh, until now. And of course, it put us a lot of questions in terms of how we need to think about education. And in, in this particular, I'm, I'm very critical in, in terms of how education systems work uh, today. And I'm completely in favor that we should apply um, very uh, precise uh, reformer curriculums in, in terms of how um, the curriculum is delivered today. And I think that will be um, needed for us to put in terms of our curriculum in, in, in upside down. And why I'm saying that is that the challenge that we are facing today, and not only the challenge, but also the opportunities that will be given to our students, they are completely different for anything else that we ever exist. So what it, it was in terms of our experience and our past, uh, in terms of our, even our life as, as a whole, what our students, the young generation, will uh, face is completely different from everything that we can imagine. Uh, for example, if you just imagine, uh, imagine a child that was born today in 2021, try to imagine how will be the world in 2040, for, for example. And my biggest uh, concern is that the educational systems are not up to stay in, in terms of the change that we needed. And of course, we are here talking about, about STEM mainly and also um, artificial intelligence and related with computer science. And nowadays, this is not just a topic of the technical teachers. This is something that we clearly need to understand. Nowadays, a digital transformation through AI, to IoT, big data, and all these technologies that support this um, huge digital transformation, they are impacting everything. The way that, for example, if we look at language with this big model language that are able to produce text, original text. If we take, for example, in, in terms of history, the tools in terms of uh, health, uh, in terms of uh, math and, and all around. And that's why I have this position that we should take a completely different look in terms of education. But of course, this is my position. Another thing is that we already have and the things that we can do as, as a teacher. And most important is for us to have a completely different perspective in terms not be afraid to work in different ways in what is possible right now. And for example, one of the most important things to me is that we talk about these things with, with, with our, our uh, students, that we show them clear what is happening in terms of being able to conscientize and they clear understand that not only in terms of the technical challenge, the social challenge, even environment challenge, we need them for them to be clear informed about that. And I think this is clear the first thing that we should do with our students. Thank you so much. And I think this already relates to what Kiriakos uh, mentioned, 
uh, it's about the context and making this relevant uh, to the students and answering the question of why uh, we're doing this and connecting it to the real world. Now, uh, the next question will be to Vanya. And I want these first questions to be just like setting the scene, what you three, what the three of you think about uh, how this can be integrated into class. So Vanya, what resources would you recommend uh, to further develop the, the skills in computer science and artificial intelligence, and how can this be integrated into the classroom? And if you have any reactions to the previous speakers, of course, feel free to react. Um, we of course, a classic. I'm muted. Uh, so I was, I was, uh, I was just saying. So I, of course, I, I second what what uh, what Kyriakos and, and Marco ju just just mentioned. Um, I think that m more than, than than me, they are experts. They they work, you know, daily with with institutions, with students, uh, and with other teachers as well. Uh, in our side, what what we do is that we try to well to give you the tools that we believe you need uh, to um, to support the work that you know teachers are doing uh, so uh, to be honest uh, in terms of, of resources and what we believe you could be doing so i probably i will, I will share this one so um, one of the things that i i personally believe and and i think that microsoft is doing a very strong work is on the teacher's professional development because even though we probably in this call we do have in, in, in this webinar we do have teachers that already are power users i i, I saw that like 89 percent of our attendees were already using some kind of computer science in the classroom which of course i i know it's a niche in terms of the full you know education ecosystem and so all of you here should be ambassadors of this you know this this what the, the students need what the younger generations need as you know as, as marco and kiri just just uh, talked about um, and the relevance of the teacher is so important that of course if the teachers do not feel comfortable enough to talk about these topics and to integrate uh, technology and make it you know make the, the, the students seize it in a way that they will be able to master it uh, and especially because you know um, we don't know how their life is going to be right we don't know what 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 uh, what the world will look like and after the pandemic as, as, as Kiriaka said there's a world before and a world after and even if before these topics were already very important, now I think they are just crucial. And everything that we do probably is already too late, or or not or not that late. But we are already, you know, trying to catch up time. Uh, and that's why we we created, you know, a lot of, of of resources. Not the only one that I already shared with you, like computer science curriculum, but many others that help you. Be better prepared to talk to these topics with your with your students. For example, we have an AI business school for education course, which in reality is nothing more but to open the the mindset of how can AI be used in education and what are the implications of AI in the future of education um, and in the future of you know of us all in the end. And and so this is this is uh, something that we should all be thinking about because we already have AI embedded in most of the things that we already do, even though we don't realize, right? Uh, when we have all the cookies and all the things that sometimes chases, right? When we go and ask and and search for an item on internet, and then all of a sudden many uh, items like those start to appear in our threads. So we 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 need to make to to be aware of that, and our students need to understand how technology works. So they can master their own future as you know digital citizens, and this is I think this is very very important, and this is very uh, you know in the core of what we are doing. Of course, we have we have Minecraft, so this is what we have as our game based learning technology. So we, this is something that we use and that we that that we have that we in, in fact Microsoft has bought Minecraft, as you know, um, and Minecraft and we have developed Minecraft education specifically because we see the you know how how good game based learning can be and how how much students love Minecraft and how it can really have power to 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 make them understand that computer games are not only to for amusement they can also also learn through uh, that process and that's what we really incentivize uh, i can only 
probably you know just mention uh, that we we will have also regarding Code Week, we are launching a new uh, Minecraft Global Build Challenge in partnership with UNESCO. I think all of you should try this with your students because this is really good. I haven't tried it. I always tried it with my eight-year-old girl. So she's uh, she loves Minecraft. So normally she's my beta tester. She has not done it yet because uh, lack of time, but probably this weekend. Uh, so it's peace with nature. So this is about, of course, also sustainable development. And we are, want to make sure that kids uh, understand the global challenges of this of this world and the climate change and all of that through Minecraft. And it's a very good way for them to, to do that. Um, and of course, you can ask your, your, your kids to participate and your students to, and you can incentivize them to do that. Uh, they can they can do the submissions until the, 15th, the 19th of November, sorry. And uh, we really, uh, you know, uh, invite you all to at least try it. And if you don't feel that you are that you know yet enough about Minecraft to use it in your you know in your classroom and and and, and do game is learning, uh, we do have coming up a new edition for teachers only uh, on the November the tenth, uh, and and um, it will be uh, it will be five weeks duration. It's uh, one hour per week, so it's not much of your time. But after that, I'm sure that you will be. You know, also a fan of my, of Minecraft, and you will be very very comfortable in using in your in your classroom, at least. So we expect. Thanks a lot, Vanya. And picking up on that, I would like to direct the next question to Kiriakos. So Vanya mentioned Minecraft and uh, game based learning. So you are the technology director in uh, your school. What do you think how this game-based learning is, like what role does it play? How is this important in uh, in education today? Excellent, thank you. That really ties into everything that we've been discussing so far. Um, I'm, go I'm not going to try and hype people about Minecraft. I think Minecraft is doing a, a the world job on its own is in hyping its own existence. It's been around for what is considered an eternity in the world of uh, video games, um, over 10 years now and going strong. And the fact game-based learning was always there um, in, in the educational world, I would say, um, even even just, you know, uh, just, just introducing a game-like aspect into your teaching environment is as simple as introducing a quiz, a, 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 a role play discussion. So just just having students being immersed in, in an objective where where the world, the, the story becomes immersive. Um, it's nothing new. However, Minecraft uh, accelerated and, 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 and brought forward, let's say, um, these the skills that we see that I'm, I'm sharing on my slide, the skills that we see in a way that they became much more present, much more obvious. So me as a teacher, when I go inside a Minecraft environment, let's say, where students are exploring a topic, a world, um, coding, computer science, uh, the S SDGs, uh, any, any topic, um, collaboration, problem solving, the communication, the critical thinking, this, what we used to call the, the uh, you would still call it the, the four C's, um, are so easily identified um, that the teacher only needs to be a facilitator inside the environment and help the students recognize when that learning is taking place. So when students get together in a Minecraft world, in a Minecraft project to work together, um, and they start exploring the world, it doesn't really matter if they explore it correct or not. Um, the creativity, the platform is there to allow for um, a, a very personalized experience. But what the students do in the moment of their immersion when they enter this portal is, is in a, it's in a very sub subconscious level. Um, they delegate processes between them. They take ownership. They identify their skills and they uh, uh, contribute to the project in the way they feel most comfortable and most skillful. Um, and the last two um, elements I have there, the last two uh, uh, skills, the empathy in agency, are extremely important, um, not only 
through game-based learning, but across the whole uh, lifelong learning cycle of a student and beyond. Um, Minecraft teaches empathy not only through the way we explore a world or a content, but through the way that I identify immediately with a specific role that we are attributing uh, myself and my team inside the world. And of course, agency. The students take ownership of the, what, they, what they build. They dominate the tools. Uh, they don't need to be taught how to use the tool. They need to be taught what is the learning objectives. And this takes me back again to the most important part of uh, game-based learning experiences. Context is extremely important. If somebody steps in a class and sees students playing Minecraft, they're playing a video game. The moment you understand that there is context behind it, the skills being developed and the teacher, based on the lesson planning experience, identifies them and puts them forward, that is extremely powerful. And it's a very organic process because students and teachers get to learn through these processes together. And that's when it becomes extremely relevant. Thank you so much. Now, Marco, I mentioned in the introductory slides that we're facing a couple of challenges in our societies related to different areas, but uh, in this context, of course, related to STEM. And uh, Kiriakos mentioned now, you see it uh, still on the slide, a couple of uh, skills and competencies that uh, that can be used and that can be advocated for in a class with different means. Now, the question to you as an expert in digital transformation and uh, in, uh, in these areas is how does this respond to the challenges we are facing and uh, how, well, which models are able to respond to these challenges we are facing? Uh, yes, yes, indeed. We we think about the, the competence that our students needed, and the competence that, that they will need in, in the future. And we were talking here about the future is not just a question of a long future. Okay, so if you, for example, try to take an understanding of the speed things are happening, the last wave of AI just start nine years ago in 2012. And what happened in just a period of 10 years is, is, is really amazing. And is not in the area, once again, of the technological field, is in all different areas. We have, um, um, let's say, very important moments once it was when DeepMind developed a, a system that was able to beat the best player in Go is the most complex uh, game in, in, in the world. And it was not just a question as in the time when we have the, the IBM the machine um, playing chess and one to, to Kasparov. It was all what was behind that. And there is even a move that is considered as a move that inside as what we consider as exclusive of us, the human beings, that is creativity. When the machine at that time makes that move, the big experts were saying, oh, this is something completely crazy that makes no sense. And some moves after what we exist is that was something really beautiful. Um, I, I, I never play Go, okay? Just what, what I read and understand in terms of this. What I want to say is that we are, we are living this, this, these times where we are getting this very blurred image of the future when we have the mix between the carbon we and, and, and the silicon machines. Some people say that we are living in, in, the, in the area of the smart agents or the intelligent machines. And the competence that we needed is clear some of, of, of the ones that Kiriakos pointed. Um, and we know that the four Cs, they have been discussing for a long time. We have been said that that are the 21 uh, century competences needed for our students. The question is that we are already in 2021 and we keeping saying that our students need to develop this kind of competence. So is to try to, to, to identify what is the pedagogical context and the pedagogical environment that allow us in working with our students to understand this. 
And for me, from my opinion, one thing is very important is for us as teachers and educators clear understand what is happening. Try to be informed about what's happening. Have uh, a conscience about it happen. Uh, um, for example, I, I can just put a very, a, a, a very short question and you can answer in the chat. Uh, how many teachers in your school know what is AI and what are the impacts of AI nowadays? And this is so tremendous in terms of the labor market, as, as I was saying, because uh, until now, if school was not able to give the competence that the students need, there was a lot of jobs that didn't require any kind of higher competencies. OK, and they could be working warehouses and other type of things. The question right now is that these jobs are being replaced by these systems. And it's not only a question of automation. Right now, we are at the level of intelligent automation. So what are the schools given to the students that just start their educational path and where they finish in 12 years, for example? And of course, all these competences are very important. These forces, creativity, communication, uh, collaboration, complex problem solving. Some years ago, I, I said that we need one more C on the four Cs. And one, one of these Cs is the C of curiosity. We need to be able as teachers, even if you don't have that curriculum reform, that I say that is clearly important, in terms of students, because they will be challenged every day in school, after school, in their jobs. So that kind of life in three stages that just end up with our generation, that was school study, job for life, and then retire, it's completely over. And we need clear to understand. And if you want to work for a better future, the only place I can find that to work is through education. I, I don't know anything. If anyone knows how we can change the world and be able to live along this a smart agent and so on, and all the questions that are behind this, because we know that it's tremendous questions. AI is not magic, okay? And we are the ones that are creating the, the, the AI. Until now, I don't know in five years if we're going to have an AI that is able to create another AI, okay? But right now, and we have so many questions around this. We have the stereotypes, we have the bias, we have all privacy and so many things. And are we discussing this with our students in school? Of course, we need this kind of technical, uh, let's say, um, activities, and we have amazing research to, to do that. Kyriakos just talked about some, and, and, and also Vania. For example, in Microsoft, we have the Imagine Cup, that is a great place to put students to work around this and discuss solutions for problems. So nowadays, we have so huge problems that I think that our intelligence only by their own is not able to solve them. So instead of an artificial intelligence, we need an augmented intelligence that is able to power and for us to be able to solve this kind of problems. So once again, I think what is clearly important is these things needs to be discussed in terms of the classroom. And from there, there is so many resources, so many things that we can use it will be very difficult here today to give you uh, okay, the, uh, a description of an activity that you can do, but just try to go to your classroom and ask your student, what is AI? Do you ever use AI? Nowadays, we have our students interact with the, 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 the Cortanas and Siri and Alex, and they talk to them and they ask things. What is the capital of Portugal, for example? OK, they don't need to go to a book. So this completely changed in terms of all, all the environment. That's why it's so important for us to be here discussing. And it's really amazing that we have more than 100 participants here today, because this means that we have teachers that are looking to try to understand and to do this kind of activities in, in the way that they, 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 they work with the students. And of course, the resources that was um, uh, presented here are, are, are really uh, amazing. And we have an, uh, other ones from European school, uh, school net, for example, in um, uh, school academy, we have a, a MOOC about AI. Uh, also two years ago, 
Uh, I hosted a webinar about artificial intelligence and, and education in school education and the gateway. You have the, the code power, uh, true uh, uh, Minecraft, you also have um, uh, AI uh, activities. But what is important is what is AI? How AI is impact us, uh, us today and bring this to, the, to, to your school. For sure That's that you are going to have the support of all these institutions, European Schoolnet and Microsoft and all the others. So give you the support that you need to talk about this. Thank you so much, Marco. And with this being said, before we do a last round of the last advice that you have to our audience today, I would like to open the floor uh, at the end of our session now to the questions and answers session. So if in our audience we have anyone who would like to raise a question to our speaking panel, then please raise your hand and we will unmute you. So you can actually interact live with, with our uh, speakers. And I see already that we have uh, some hands raised here. So, um, Shital, Jalan. Uh, thank you for the wonderful seminar so far. My question is, I, I was particularly interested in the part where, you know, we could use Minecraft for the code week. So where can I find more details about it. Maybe this question, Vanya, do you want to reply to that? Yes, for sure, for sure. We will we will paste the, um, the links here in the chat and I think that uh, Joanna already did it, but perhaps uh, she can do it again. Um, and uh, we will give you the details of how you can how you can address uh, that with your with your students. I also published, I believe, today or yesterday, uh, an article as well on, on that topic. I will also try to put here the, the, the link because you will find also, you know, um, information about the computer science toolkit and all of the rest of the uh, code week materials that we have yeah. put together. Okay, Shital? Thank you. And if I understood correctly, this particular edition of Minecraft, it will be available for free only for the code week, right? Exactly. Normally during the code week, the, the, the challenges that are available for the code week, they are for free. Um, but of course, you, you need to, to have an education, um, an education account to mm -hmm. be able to to address, you know, to assess, you know, to to access uh, okay. Minecraft education. OK, but if you go to the to the site, you just download it. If you have a, an education account, it will it will oh. open. Right. And yeah. then you can uh, choose from the library, uh, the the, um, the uh, code week um, uh, materials and yeah. you'll also see the the previous year's code week so yeah. if you also want to put your that. Plan, for example to the to do the ai that was from last year and the the year before i think they are still all available there as well okay okay thank you so much thank all you. right if anyone else has a question please raise your hand otherwise we've also received some questions in the chat so for instance from thomas what ethical concerns have you do you have in the integration of artificial intelligence in teaching learning and assessment and i think this um this already touches upon what marco mentioned so maybe marco if you want to very shortly because we only have four minutes left uh if you want to reply to that yes i, I will try to be short okay um, yes, th th there is questions uh, around this in terms of the use of uh, AI in this particular uh, field. Because in terms of AI, we can see mainly three con contenders where we can uh, use AI in education. One of them is um, learning for AI, so mainly is cross-curriculum to all subjects, okay, because it's impacting everything. What are the competences? What I need to know about AI in general. Another one is learning AI because we clearly know right now that we're going to need lots of professions, not only in terms of, of, of AI, data science and so on. And this is a key question for Europe in, in the next years. It's not just a question of education. If you see the big geopolitical uh, blocks like the U USA and mainly in Asia, China, Singapore and South Korea, we're going to need to have this um, professionals in terms of put also Europe in terms of the, the whole contest. And the other one is learning with AI. And the question was related with that. And is mainly using AI to support the learning and teaching process. And of course, assessment is a part of, of that. And once again, I have a lot of concerns around here because mainly what I have been seeing so far in terms of what is developed 
to support the learning and teaching process is to individualize the teacher and give, let's say, the command to the teaching and learning process to an algorithm, mainly to a black box algorithm, using what data and define the paths of the students. I'm not saying that AI is not very useful, of course, and has a lot of potential, mainly to free the teacher for most of the of, of the things that we don't like so much to do, as Kyriakos know and, and I know as, as as teachers, of course. But we need to be aware of that. That's why we should not having AI and learning and teaching process as a black box, but rather than an open box and have to pay clear attention. What data is being used? Why? Um, how this data was collected? How the algorithm is using this data? Because we are talking here about what will be the decisions made in terms of the future of a, a, a young children. Okay, so this Absolutely. is very critical in terms of this. Short, so Thanks. sorry that I, I, I was bro. never short. But the last question yeah. now goes to Kiriakos and we have a question from Katerina. Uh, Sorry, so uh, we actually have two questions, one from Abi, uh, who is wondering if uh, for the, for example, if we use Tinkercad uh, in classroom, uh, she's wondering if this is enough for artificial intelligence or if other aspects such as robotics or she mentions other um, so other, other programs, uh, if this should also be used. So what I think the, the underlying question is what qualifies as artificial intelligence and um, maybe just to wrap this up, what final advice do you have to teachers uh, when it comes to the implementation? Oh, oh, okay, thank you. That's, that's also a very long question and uh, I need to keep it very short. Uh, what, 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 what classifies as AI and I think based on everything that Mark also mentioned and, and I've also tried to introduce in my school as well is Exactly that. Um, introducing robots in the classroom through coding, it's an excellent, it's an excellent way to teach coding as well as how uh, we can automate processes um, through a robot um, and, and eventually uh, scale them up. Um, with, two, with, with students in the classroom, what I've seen most comfortably working with is understanding how AI gathers and processes data. Uh, especially through a concept called the machine learning, uh, which is an AI concept that really uh, helps students wrap their head around that. So um, obviously working with, let's say, machine learning and AI involves a lot of development before that. Um, the Imagine Cup Junior is an excellent opportunity and it doesn't involve any practical uh, hands-on tools. It's all about exploring topics that we can solve with AI. Um, the AI for Good activities on code.org is an excellent um, curricular path for students to uh, interact with an online portal, uh, how AI helps, let's say, gather garbage in the ocean and make oceans cleaner. So these, these concepts can really help later on simulate them with a robot um, in order to create something that is tangible. So okay. maybe the product itself can be AI, but is connected to that concept. Okay, perfect. So with this, I am uh, closing the session for today and I would just like to direct the attention again to the participation list. So please fill out this form if you want to receive a certificate. And also we would be very happy to hear your feedback on how this webinar and uh, the interaction today went. Finally, uh, I have some news from the STEM Alliance. We do have a LinkedIn account now, so follow us there if you're interested. And I'm also very excited that we've just released our autumn newsletter with the latest news from STEM fields and the STEM Alliance. Now, this being said, it's been a pleasure. Thank you to everyone and thanks especially to our three speakers today for joining us and uh, engaging with the audience. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Bye bye.